sete, sete. Please get settled. We are on our way. respectful person it's because um, the people who were here in the last panel were actually very important person people so I try to be very respectful so this time around is my real self no diplomacy troublemaking you if you looking for a fight I will come down finish the fight and come back <laughs> right um, this time around I have an all ladies panel and like I said, it happens very rarely. So take all the photos because you probably may not see another panel of only ladies. So this is a rare occasion. Please enjoy it. Please take the photo and remind yourself. And let's try to create more of this. I work for the World Wide Web Foundation as its uh, interim policy person. I do a lot of advocacy and a lot of work on gender. Uh, but the people we have here, before we come to e-commerce and e-trade and all of that, UNCTAD and Geneva and UN stuff, we want to know who's here. I mean, we've worn our lipsticks, yeah, we've worn our high heels, yeah, we've put on nice perfumes, yeah, but we want to know who's seated here. Uh, I'm going to come from this way and that way. You're going to tell us your name. Um, your first name, you see the last names here, you, you can read them. I'm not going to do the long introduction. Every girl you've, you've seen here has gone to school. Every girl sitting here is a power lady. Every girl sitting here is a leader. So get that down already, right? So you are dealing with the people who do stuff on the ground. Ladies, I love you, you're welcome. Uh, let me tell you something nice about myself. People, when they look at me, they say, oh, your dress is nice. Uh-uh. Let me tell you something you need to know about me. I'm a soccer fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Champions League, African Cup of Nations, Europe Cup of Nations, and yes, World Cup. I was in South Africa in 2010. Mm-hmm. I was in Brazil in 2014. Mm-hmm. I went to Russia last year, and trust me, if the good Lord gives me life, I will be going down to, Dakar, uh, to Qatar. World Cup, there are ladies like this on this panel. Candace, who are you? Hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Candace, and to go beyond the traditional um, uh, introduction, I, when I was a little girl, I grew up in a little town in Cameroon called Edea, and my mother used to drag me on Saturday in markets to do grocery shopping with her and it would last for hours. I have got from that, I, I dread shopping, I hate shopping, and that's how I started like literally worshipping e-commerce because it was an opportunity to shop without having to go out there and drag myself for hours. And well, now we are talking about e-commerce, so I think Hell it's a nice yeah. full circle. <laughs> This is going to be a panel. Yes. Uh, yeah. Is it working now? Yes, it is. I, I see it's, it's, it's on. It's on. Good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so I'm Nina. I'm coming from North Macedonia. What you probably don't know is that we recently changed the name of our country, which oh. just used to call Macedonia. Now we're called North Macedonia. So it's a bit of strange to, to be uh, saying our new name now. Uh, I, uh, I will go on and connect with, uh, while introducing myself and mention my mother as well, because while I was very little, she was, she was going to teach me that or regardless what we have today, it can be all gone one day, but what, what you cannot lose, what other people cannot steal from you or whatever happens is what you have in here. Mm -hmm. 
and that that was the knowledge that was why I was striving to finish school and do a PhD and all these things but I also have uh, a big heart for e-commerce or passion so I would say what I love about myself was the question or what we like or love about ourselves is that I'm I think that I love we all have problems and uh, and regardless where we go we will there will be problems I love the problems that I'm solving I love the struggle and I'm obsessed with the improvements in our everyday lives you are welcome Uh, I'm Xiaofei Yao uh, from China. Um, to tell you something that interesting to remember me. Um, last year, there uh, was a quite famous uh, journalist uh, wrote an article about me and, uh, and, and also my entrepreneurial experience. And at the end, uh, I think uh, he has chosen uh, highlights on the cover, which is sad a wolf with a red lipstick to describe <laughs> me. <laughs> that, were, that was quite surprising. Uh, so I think that's probably the way how people see me in the professional world. And another thing I probably want to emphasize here, I do look young relatively, especially I'm working in pharmaceutical e-commerce industry, but my real age is 36. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, probably red lipsticks make you look younger. <laughs> we don't care. And she's wearing it right here. Right? Welcome to red lipsticks, pink lipsticks, all of the lipsticks. <laughs> well, I'm going to go over there to my friend. Okay. Hello, I'm, I'm Huda. I'm from Morocco. Uh, I have two boys. I'm done with diapers, hopefully, and tantrums. But I'm doing every day one hour and a half their homework. <laughs> uh, I came from a small city in Morocco that we call Switzerland of Morocco because it's a small city, it snows in the winter, so it's small. It's, uh, uh, you don't imagine it uh, as if I was living with camels and, de and deserts. I came from a city where it snows in the winter. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I feel that I'm not, uh, like in, uh, I'm not in e-commerce actually, but I, we do digitalization in local government in Morocco. So I've been doing that like for since 2005, since I started my company. And I love shades of purple uh, for my lipstick. <laughs> right, okay. So we've got red lipsticks, um, uh, pink and purple. Okay. We're coming on with the lipsticks. Claudia. Hello, I am Claudia, I am from Mexico City. Um, thank you very much, and I am very honored to share the panel with all of these amazing women. One thing I love about myself, uh, like you mentioned, I have three kids, so the vitality that ha that has brought into my life is definitely one thing that I'm amazed at. And one of my, the favorite things I have discovered in life is my ability to learn. I have learned how to be an entrepreneur because I was not raised to do that. I have learned how to uh, overcome the obstacles in a mostly male-dominated world in Mexico, tech, obviously, and e-commerce. And I, I love now how I'm learning to become a mother of three kids. I'm not done with diapers yet. Uh, and that's one of my, the favorite things I like about me. My favorite uh, lipstick color is um, dark wine or wine stain. Burgundy. <laughs> Burgundy, uh, yes. Ox blood. Yes. Ay, ay, ay. That's the killer color. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Right. Rebecca? You're welcome. Um, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I don't care about what color lipstick. Sorry. Don't um, tell me you don't, I don't wear lipstick. I, I do. I'm wearing lipstick right now. I can see it. Um, uh, my, the, my, I love champagne. Ah. And I drink champagne every day. Woohoo! Um, when I get home from work, I have a glass of champagne. And when it's been really, 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 really tough, I have two glasses of champagne. Um, but yeah, so other than that, I'm a, I'm a tech entrepreneur. I guess we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay, people. Um, that's, I think you will remember us now. 
not just as uh, e-commerce people, but as live women doing great things, taking care of our families while also moving the global economy forward. Um, once again, we would like you to get back to us on hashtag Unctad e -week. Everyone knows that. And hashtag my ET for women. My ET for women. I would like to now ask you questions that do not have to do with shopping so people don't just think we came here to s say what lipstick we love. But um, you, from the work you do on daily basis, from the, the, the work, the, the experiences you have uh, doing your work, whether it's in digitization, whether it's in moving uh, materials or in funding or, or, or in all of these. My, 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 my question would be one or the other, you can answer them. Um, how do we ensure that we get a place at the policy table? And when we get a place at the table, how do we ensure that issues are raised and what issues need to be raised at policy instances? So how do we get there? How do we determine what's on the menu? And how do we determine how the menu is eaten so we can effectively have impact? I'm going to start, as always, from Candace, uh, who does not like shopping <laughs> and has been very innovative around it. How do we get to the policy levels? How do we put issues on the table? What issues? And how do we make sure that we, uh, our issues get addressed? Yes, ma'am. Um, I can, uh, regarding how to get a seat at the table, I can only speak from my experience. Personally, I moved back to Cameroon in 2014 to run an e-commerce company called Jumia Market uh, that became Jumia Leader. And um, the way I did it was to vicariously bring value, not only to my customer, but to the ecosystem, to women, to youth, to spending my weekend doing things, documenting them, and branding myself very aggressively for the world to see that there is a way to make a positive impact doing e-commerce, whether you are a woman or not. And that visibility got the attention of media, that ultimately got the attention of our government, Ministry of Telecom, of Trade and Education, namely. And because of the networking and the fact that I was sharing my work, one day I received an email telling me that I was invited to speak at UNCTAD precisely on this table for the first time in 2016. That's how I got a seat at the table. I don't have a parent or family that got me a hand or a boyfriend that got me a hand. I did it by being strategic, innovative, and a little bit entrepreneurial in how I manage my career and visibility, and that no manager could remove that from me or, or give it to me, basically. So that's my advice coming from my personal experience. Um, what issues need to be uh, put on the table? I think it depends on, on the country. It's really a case-by-case -case situation. But I think what is very important, especially is especially when it comes uh, to women, is education. How do we help them get more digital skills and uh, in order to create value from those digital skills, not just to use them on WhatsApp or Facebook or something like that. Uh, also, uh, support the women that are already doing great job in the fields uh, as trader or as e-merchant to have higher standards in terms of e-commerce practice. Or we have like hundreds or thousands of Facebook uh, e-merchant e in our countries at least, uh, but how can we scale that up and make these like, there is a need, that's why these, web, these pages are, are thriving, but how do we give them higher standards to be able to conquer the e-commerce market and go beyond their, their, the borders of their country? And last but not least is uh, being intentional in providing uh, leadership opportunities uh, to women in those fields. If it doesn't happen organically, uh, there must be policy initiatives to give uh, women leadership role within those organizations. Otherwise, it will never be happen. It will never happen, sorry. And the digital economy in our developing countries will never be gender inclusive and it will miss an opportunity um, to positively impact society as well. So, yes.
speak from my personal experience, of course, of how I got a seat at the table or how I got my voice heard in the terms of policy making. Uh, since I didn't say much about what I do when I was introducing uh, the, the first session, I am running uh, the leading e-commerce platform in uh, North Macedonia and I am also representing the NGO. Uh, a year and a half ago, I also funded the first Macedonian e-commerce association. So we practically are representing the industry now and we are, we are growing and becoming very strong in terms of uh, having the voice of the business sector heard, not only my voice as a woman in e-commerce. So uh, I, I would say that uh, I totally agree that it's all about hard work and putting yourself out there and uh, uh, let's say uh, trying, to, trying to make an impact and make a change, but I really think that I kind of, I was 21 years old when I started the business uh, and I was very young, I didn't, I, I simply, I believed in myself, I believed that I can make a change and I, I had that moving mountains attitude when my parents or somebody would tell me, come on, uh, we know that you can make a lot and that you're a hard worker, but yet that you're going to change the e-commerce regulation in the country, like, no way. And I was sending uh, letters to the to our Ministry of Economy, uh, uh, saying that this uh, law is nonsense. We need to change this. Um, and after uh, uh, some time, I think that my effort uh, gave some results, and we saw some changes in the regulations. But not only in terms of change excites me in general. Not only in the policy, not only regulations. But we educated the market, we had to actually teach people what is online shopping so that we create the market for ourselves. And uh, I would like to top this off because we, maybe because we're t talking about women, uh, and I think that it applies to everybody, but however, especially to women, especially to very young women, when we go and talk with uh, institutions and ministers and all these things, I think that self-confidence is very important and attitude. But I think that it's fostered and built through knowledge, through constant learning. And I felt like I will be the, the, the person in the room that knows the most, that will give the resources that are needed. And I will say what the voice of the business sector uh, uh, actually. So I think that every policymaker needs a reliable source of what the business needs. And the catch is actually how do we build ourselves into becoming that reliable so source that they turn to when they need advice about what the business sector needs. Uh, so that would be uh, on, on uh, how we can get the voice of uh, to, to policy making and get ourselves heard. And in terms of what issues uh, should, uh, should uh, um, be raised, I will um, add, uh, I will agree and add something to, to, Cam to what Camden said. Um, I think that, yes, I, I, I agree that uh, we need to give, uh, you mentioned that we need to, uh, to give them leadership, uh, 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 let's say, room for uh, women to be able to lead. Uh, but I would also like to tackle here that we also need more women who aspire and who are ambitious and who want to lead. Uh, because we, what, on the first part of the panel, what we have heard was the, 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 the devastating numbers about very few, very little percentages of women being there, represented there. Uh, th uh, on the one side, uh, there are uh, less women than men that want to go into engineering careers. And when we speak about where, in which areas women are more, we say it is probable, it is very likely that, but not, it, it, not that women want to lead. And this is a fact, uh, a study at Harvard found that women are better leaders than uh, men. Uh, the, the study it was done in 16 competencies, and the two competencies where women were very outperformed men were taking initiative and driving for results. And these are key, key uh, things for in, when, when we speak about leading. So I would say that we need to make that room, but we also need to push women to want to, to not be afraid to dream big and to be ambitious and to aspire to lead. Uh, because uh, another study shows that women, when it comes to, uh, to jobs that, are, uh, more, that ask for higher responsibility, those are jobs, usually senior management jobs, that men more aspire. So that would be my view on this one. Thank you very much. I'm still keeping an eye on the stream. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, I think I will express some, some my opinion uh, more generally. Um, I think with the 
progress of digital economy development, and more and more business opportunities in e-commerce appears. And female entrepreneurs, generally speaking, um, have the sensitivity and the creativity to discover the consumer pains or to discover the enhancement that uh, technology or internet-based business model can help. Um, but uh, on the journey of the entrepreneuring, uh, a lot of challenges we have to face, especially for women. Uh, for example, the social bias <laughs> to women and the family planning um, and the finance raising and sometimes even sexual harassment <laughs> yes. and so on. So I think address to these concerns and also grant a place um, at decision making process for successful female leadership is essential for the inclusion and the sustainability in the digital economy. Um, first of all, I think the current decision maker uh, should be uh, should full aware or uh, really understand the importance of the balance between men and uh, women on the decision and the discussion panel. Uh, female leaders sometimes uh, I think really can be really considerate and the long term thinking on certain topics or issues. And moreover, challenges faced to women can be reflected to make sure the inclusion and this need to be a top down approach. Uh, for example, uh, the percentage of women uh, representative on the panel can be strongly suggested or become a principle of, uh, of operations. For example, in China, many of the policy making um, panel requires the minimum percentage of women leader on board. Um, secondly, I think any female leaders who are already on the decision making board should speak louder <laughs> for women empowerment and reinforce more inclusion of women to bring uh, more female leaders on board. And uh, thirdly, I think more campaign on women empowerment and female leader participation should be promoted at a high level of institution, organization, such as you know what we are doing um, at the United Nations. And the more it is being discussed, I think the more attention will be drawn. And this is to drive the progression of the civilization and women empowerment as a criteria for the regional or country development assessment. Uh, time by time, I think this will become a modern culture and hopefully a great progression uh, accelerated in the digital economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yao. It's been refreshing so far. Um, you halfway done, believe me. Uh, it's going to finish and you're going to ask to stay in the room. We will have to kick you out. Um, Isabel, could you please transmit our congratulations to the UN Secretary General for the efforts being made to have no panels, panels where they are only men. I think the UN has put in a lot of effort to balance this and we want to appreciate it. Because at least you have to be on the table before we can raise our issues. At the World Wide Web Foundation, what we have found out is that um, sometimes we might have a women-only gathering. We, we run the African Summit on Women and Girls in Technology because we do realize that um, having a women safe space is also very important in the digital world. Uh, I have been a leader in the open source, open data, open tech, open government uh, arena for over 20 years. And I do know the, the importance of having these safe spaces where women can actually uh, speak to each other about things that they might not feel comfortable around. And women leaders, we cannot downplay those. Huda, can we hear you? Thank you. Anna, by, by what you said earlier when we were me in meeting, we are already here. And we are uh, great, uh, um, I mean, happy that we are in a pa uh, all women panel. But we need also to be in New York and uh, in, in, uh, in other decision-making uh, tables where uh, women are given the opportunity to voice the fears, the uh, needs, 
the achievements of their peers. I've been active this uh, uh, last year in, uh, in lots of uh, organizations, continental and regional Arab women in computing, uh, AFCHIX, which is a continental uh, uh, group of women in, in STEM, and do, we're trying to help women in our uh, region in, uh, in accessing uh, STEM field and uh, continuing in it and uh, launching their businesses. This is how we can help women, I mean, access uh, the board, give them visibility, give them the tools, capacity building, give them access as well. One of the projects that we're working on is uh, developing, uh, and with uh, uh, ISOC Internet Society, we're developing uh, community, community networks in some uh, countries in Africa to enable women in the rural areas to access the internet and sell their goods via the internet. So all this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 how we call that, accompagnement, I mean, all the, uh, this follow-up with the, those women that do not have the access, that do not have the tools to be able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to be active in, uh, in the IT field, we should uh, uh, accompany them. Thank you very much. Um, there is funding. There are models, and the word accompaniment reflects in English as not just um, accompaniment, but also mentoring. Because uh, cash alone is not enough, how to use it, and how to uh, use it in a sustainable manner it is very important. One of the tricks people have is that they give a bunch of money to an unqualified woman, setting her up for failure, and then they put the camera on her, and when she fails, it's like, we told you. <laughs> you got the money, you didn't do anything. But she did not have the means to manage that money very well. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go over to Claudia. Um, sorry. First of all, I think we need to acknowledge that there needs to be changes in the policy making and that there are not enough women in the, at the table, especially in Mexico. Um, and maybe consider that we have been doing some gender wash, um, painting everything pink and saying it is for women is not necessarily a, a change in the policy making. The way I look at it is I see successful e-commerce platforms and few of them are led by women. So we're not even thinking deep enough, analyzing what, need, what needs to be changed in the first place, just because the standard is already dominated by a, by a male mentality. Uh, so we need to think about that too. Um, and, and in this analysis, we should invite every different piece of the e-commerce ecosystem to the table. Uh, women in technology, in operations, trade specialists, a sales specialist, to make sure all of these voices are heard. From my experience also in policy making uh, groups, after they may make sure these people or these successful women are at the table, they need to let them be. They need to let them uh, just work and make sure that they're not overpowering them with an, an agenda, but just letting them do their work and give them the tools to actually make changes and have some actionability. Uh, so in a nutshell, for me, the, the three key points to answering the question is acknowledge that there needs to be a change, analyze what needs to be changed, especially on a regional basis, then empower and make sure that these women have actionability. Uh, what, police are, what policies are need to be changed, especially in Mexico? Well, basically education and access to education, access, actually access in general to connectivity, education, etc. Maternity and paternity leaves, because these are very important obstacles that we still face in Mexico. And salary transparency. Um, in the last panel, they were mentioning that in Sweden, they make 91% less than men. In Mexico, it's actually around 25 to 30%. So that actually needs to be changed and, and talked about. Thank you. 
um, we had equal equal pay, uh, consistent pay, and I think we uh, we haven't even talked about unpaid labor because uh, um, I work from home myself, and sometime a labor came up and told me, so all you do is just sit in front of the computer, you don't do anything, <laughs> uh, because doing something for a woman as if we don't have something in here. And by the way, ladies, this is not a serious question. This thing about pink for women, is there anyone here whose favorite color is pink? Because mine is black. Okay, just if you, have, if, if you forget every other thing we said here, just know that for all the powerful women here, we don't care about pink. <laughs> yeah, that's the message. We love other colors. Okay, <laughs> Rebecca? Women and um, tech entrepreneurs, because I think a lot of times um, there's tons of programs that are created for us, tons of research on us, tons of conferences and discussions about us that don't include us. Mm -hmm. um, and so very well-meaning people uh, spend a lot of time, a lot of money a lot of energy on ill-designed programs because they do not address the real problems that women have, um, not just women, but entrepreneurs in general, and especially in tech. I think that, that um, so I'm, I'm thank you uh, for, for having us here today. So that I think the, the most important thing we can do is share our, our experience so that those of you that are, are, are creating these programs and, and writing the policies can understand what we really go through when we create our businesses. Um, and so I started my company, I'm from Cameroon, born, raised, don't mind the accent, my mom is American, and so she taught me English with an American accent, so people spent, but I did start my company uh, 20 years ago in the US, and, um, at the time, and I built a global, a multi-million dollar global business, um, offices in, in, in um, seven offices on, on, on three continents, um, and I grew incredibly fast. I think within a couple of years, I mean, within five years, we were at 40, 40 million dollars in revenue, um, which, which I was able to Sorry, do. Sorry, can you come back on the amount? Forty million, forty million dollars. Just in case we missed it. Yeah. So, um, so you know, the business was valued at over fifty million um, at the time, and and and, and you know, the, my experience after, because I was a, I, I crashed, and I crashed why? Because we didn't have the funding, and so to grow my company and scale my company that big, I was able to do it because people didn't know I was the boss. So I could hide, I had a business card had no title on it. So I could be a salesperson, I could be a, an engineer, I could be procurement person, and I went around signing multi-million dollar contracts because they didn't know it was my company. Because if they had, they would have questioned me. Where I couldn't hide was in the funding, right? So I couldn't go to a, a VC and, and, and say that I'm not the founder. And so I never raised money. Um, and companies, that were started by men that I, I remember one that I know in particular because he's a friend of mine. And when the first day we met, I was actually a customer of his software and I'm not going to um, um, point him out today. Although he's very supportive. But um, I remember we met at the World Economic Forum um, in 2002, January, I'll never forget. And he, ha he was walking around with his business plan and he shared his business because he was raising money. Um, and he walked around with his business, he showed me his business plan, and I had seven times his revenue. Today, his company is worth 70 billion US dollars. I think that the main difference is, you know, we, we can grow without funding, but we can't scale without funding. Yes. Um, and so if you want to address, if you want to keep us micro, which is, I hate that term, oh my God, microfinance, micro, every time it's women, you talk about micro loans for women, right? You don't talk about micro loans for men, ever. That conversation never happens. It's always about micro and women. So if you want us to scale, 
we need access to funding. And so um, some of us, so, you know, in, 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 in Cameroon, we created a, an angel network so that we can start seed funding um, local entrepreneurs. Some women, unfortunately not all women, um, we also cr uh, created a Pan-African network, um, which is called ABAN, which is the African Business Angels Network, to, to start really, you know, saying, hey, let's put our money where our mouth is and start funding these, this next generation, because I'm definitely the oldest. I have people on this panel that could be my kids. <laughs> I'm definitely the oldest on here. But um, so, and, and, and uh, joined the World Business Angels um, uh, Network so that we, we can have this discussion about how to fund those that we believe in. So I, I you know, I've been over my time, but I, I think that what's really important, it's not easy. It's hard as hell to be an entrepreneur, any entrepreneur. It's so much harder to be a woman entrepreneur. And imagine <laughs> being a black African woman entrepreneur. I was like, a, I mean, a OVNI, a, what do they call that? A, what do they call it? OVNI? Or non, non flying object. Yeah, it's a UFO. No. Because it's like you, do, you, don't, you don't wake up one day and want that for yourself. Because you have no idea how many sacrifices people on here that have kids, they're not telling you how many sacrifices they're making um, towards their families when engaging in entrepreneurship. They're not telling you how many, I went two years without a salary, right? People don't think about the, the sacrifices that are, that are required when you're an entrepreneur. How many sleepless nights when you're an entrepreneur. And it's all worth it, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that, 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 the, that the throwing entrepreneurship out there as, okay, we can't get jobs for all these young people, so let's just make them entrepreneurs. Understand what entrepreneurship really means and the sacrifices that are required and respect that entrepreneur. So don't parade us around at conferences and say, oh, here, we have a woman entrepreneur. We have, a, we have businesses to run. Um, and so please do respect us as business people. Thank you. Sorry <laughs> for going over. No. <laughs> Angtad, it's not going to be very diplomatic today. It can get emotional. Please respect our hustle. And um, I, I know you, and at a point, I felt you. And if you have not felt that you, you've heard what the women said, but I do hope that you felt what they are saying, that th that road out there is a tough road. And the fact that they are here today still does not guarantee that they will crash tomorrow. We won't crash tomorrow, if, if I have to put it that way. At the World Wide Web Foundation, we frame our engagement around co something called REACT. Rights, education, access to knowledge, access to connectivity, content, a local content, content that is accessible, content that means uh, something for the people, and targets. Um, I felt that having a thousand women running businesses on a thousand dollars is not enough. We, we need to scale this and, and have women run big companies with big money. And, uh, and that's the only, we, we can't, we can't be having the word women poor and help all the time. We need to help women. Whenever we're talking about women, is how to help them, as if it's not our right, as if this world is run by other people and we are here to be helped. Anyway, I wouldn't get emotional. Um, we are going to come back on what people are saying online. Um, cash flow is not enough to support women entrepreneurs. Capacity is very important. Well, um, I, I, Business needs to come to the party to bridge the gender digital divide. Um, I did talk about safe spaces. Uh, quite a number of people are bringing in things. Uh, I'm going to pause now and give five opportunities for people to, let's also hear you. After we hear you, we are going to hear the E-Trade for All partners shortly, uh, but let's hear how are you feeling at this moment. We don't want to make you sad, but we, this is reality. We are not going to hide anything from you. Susan. 
Yes, there is a lady there, Susan Isco Striber. What are your thoughts? Trust you. <laughs> thank you, Chair. And thank you for all the wonderful women and the courageous men who came to support us. <laughs> I, I just uh, want to, first of all, po uh, comment on some of the things that have been raised, the importance of women speaking for themselves, which has been well elaborated. Maybe one thing that uh, has, has come to, to my mind and, and through experience, it's not just speaking to our, our, for ourselves, but I think we also need the women to support the women. I live here, so the story may not be exactly the same as Rebecca's or whoever, because while men might struggle or they might want to keep us down, you'd be surprised that women, and I think someone alluded to it, but surely the women, when they climb, they really would like to keep the rest of the women down. And we are getting into a new era where we think and feel that, yes, women can also come and they can become entrepreneurs. We are in e-technology. We are internet people like Nena. But the question we might have to ask or the hard decisions we might have to take as women is am I going to support or am I going to envy and keep pulling down? That's something about frankness as Nena encourages us to be. We might have to deal with ourselves as women because it's good to be an entrepreneur, but we might have to agree or we might have to consider my suggestion that it takes two to build a city and we may need support from these women in whichever, whatever they have to bring either as leaders, but we have to look at it as fellow partners in the race to be entrepreneurs in the digital economy. So really support from women is important. Thank you so much, Nina, and thanks so much um, to um, the very beautiful panel and very, very um, encouraging panel for women. Um, I want to make a comment on the issue of being on the table. They say either you're on the table or you're on the menu. So women will have to be on the table, not on the menu. But I think it will take a lot, a lot of technical capacity building to be able to sit on that table, to be able to ensure that we champion our interests, we defend them, and we promote them, you know, or else you end up running with, running other people's agenda. So for me, that is important. And I think it's also very, very important to ensure that all voices, women voices are heard. The reality, remember the era, there were four eras. The last one was reality. The reality on the ground, especially in Africa, is that most of the women are small producers. They are in the informal sector. They are cross-border traders. For me, I think it's very, very important to make sure that we connect whatever we are saying, we connect to those women, and their voices are heard, and they're also part of this debate. So then allow me to make just a last one announcement that tomorrow we are going to have a deeper debate tomorrow in this very same room at 1.15 to continue this debate about women because it's a very, very important huge right. issue. Thank you Before so much. Before you come in, um, I would like to give the microphone after that lady to the Netherlands. Um, so you can share from your part what, what, what you're reading in all of this that is being said. Because we know you put some of your money in this. But that will be after the lady has spoken. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I just wanted to say that it was very fascinating and inspiring to listen to both the panels about how women have made it despite all the odds that work against them and still in very success that we can see. 
Having said that, I think that in this debate, it's also important for us to look at the terms of inclusion of women in the digital economy and whether we are happy with what is being proposed, the economy that's being created through the digital uh, trade rules that are being negotiated. When you have policy proposals on the table that will restrict the right of countries, let's say, to scrutinize algorithms that anyway will insidiously amplify gender discrimination or it will limit their fiscal revenue-based earning capacities which will have negative implications on the care infrastructure funding or you cannot regulate different kinds of platforms such as agri-tech platforms whose business models will hurt the livelihoods of the most small producers and marginal women workers then I think in this conversation we should also see the kind of world order we are building because you know fighting the odds is also about changing the rules of the game and or the rules of digital trade so that this new economy we are building truly works for women. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm now coming to the Netherlands. Um, thank you very much um, for the opportunity or the first opportunity to, <laughs> to, to speak. No, I, th I think um, what is important here also for us is, is, is of course that we recognize a lot of these challenges. Um, uh, and, and not only the challenges that we see in our uh, work, in our foreign policy, but also uh, challenges in, in our, our country uh, itself. Um, so that's why in our government policy, we, we focus both on um, the things that we do need to do internally, but also the things that we uh, wish to um, uh, help, but also learn from, uh, uh, from others. And I just wanted to refer back to some of the comments that were made by um, by our, uh, uh, our Swedish colleagues. I immediately also looked at um, uh, at the the gender gap um, uh, report of, of last year, and I knew that we weren't doing uh, too well, um, which again underlines that we we have our own our own challenges. Um, we're only ranked number 27 um, in in the world um, on economic. Uh, participation and opportunity were ranked 56th, wage equality 65th, um, uh, issues regarding legislators, senior officials and managers only 96th. Um, so I, um, and that, that just as, as an aside, I, I do see that we're 71st in the category years with a female head of state, but of course we have had a queen for about 100 years, so I just want to challenge that a bit. But. Um, <coughs> Again, um, uh, this is exactly the reason why we are supporting um, uh, this this program, and I, I just want to, co to congratulate UNCTAD with the launch of, of the network. Um, and this is not something that we're um, you know, this is an, isn't a one-off exercise. This is something that we're engaged in uh, with UNCTAD for a period of, of four years, and it also again I think it underlines another important aspect. This is not something for with a um, a very short and focused intervention. This is something that, that takes a long time, not only because you know, we focus on rules and regulations and change, but it's, it's really, it takes a change in, in attitude uh, from, I think, from both sides uh, of the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we should give an opportunity to a man. The, the person who spoke is a man, just in case you didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, anyone here heard of gender responsive ICT policy? I think this is one of the things that the Web Foundation is championing among others. Because if the, the bedrock is false, if, if, it do, if it's not gender responsive in its planning, then its implementation cannot be. Uh, that is one of the things we need to put on the table. Uh, you know how you finish that policy? You will take in months and months to make a decision, and just before you publish it, someone says, uh, are you sure you added a gender lens to it? And then they are looking for a place in the big document of 152 pages where they will add a line on gender. Just so these gender people don't just look for something, do something. You know, I, I think we should step away from that and have a gender responsive planning right, right from the word go and put it in the measurement. Uh, one of the works we're doing for the open government agenda is having a feminist view to the whole open government agenda. So it's not enough. To, to just have women at the table for photo purposes. It is, it is a power struggle 
we are looking at controlling resources. We are looking at controlling power, and that is our ultimate objective. There are men and women on this planet, and there is no reason why one gender should have 80 percent and the other gender should have 20 percent. It even for equity purposes, for the sake of social justice, we, we need to begin to bridge uh, these divides. Um, there is a gentleman here, and then we will hear from E-Trade for All partners. Uh, we're going to give you two minutes each to introduce yourself and give us a word about everything that you have heard. Uh, but up before then, uh, Candice, you are going to talk to us about the My ET for Women thing. So there'll be the gentleman, Candice, and then we'll come to you. Is that okay? Thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon. Thank you very much, the panelists. It's most interesting. I have um, just an experience that I want to share with you is that for the last 30 years, I've been trying to put as many women onto the boards of my companies, and most successful women are so overburdened with so much work, I can't find women that are competent or have the time to be on the boards of companies. So just that was my comment. Are you paying for the board positions? Yeah. Absolutely. They're always All right. paid. Uh, please, may I ask you to please stand up? Ladies, okay, don't go nowhere when we're done. We're coming over there to you. You've been looking for us, now we'll look for you today. Okay, we are, we, we are here for business, for real. <laughs> Thank you very much. Candice? Uh, so thank you for for your presence and your attention. So um, one of what we want to do today is introducing to you uh, E-Trade for Women Network. Um, as we heard from uh, Mrs. Duran earlier, UNCTAD has been organizing consultation um, about the role women can play in e-commerce for a very long time. Thanks to the generous donation of the Netherlands and the contribution of our part, e trade for all partners, uh, we can now take this conversation a little bit further and engage with women in e-commerce. Um, the, the reason we want to do that is the challenges is because of the challenges women um, are facing right now. Oh, by the way, I since Monday I have joined UNCTAD as one of the contributors to this project, actually, so that's why I'm presenting it to you. Um, so basically from the consultation, this consultation and the feedback we have received from women on the ground, uh, we have identified several challenges uh, faced by them, including limited e-commerce or digital skills, substandard e-commerce practice, and by that I mean you have many women that are digital entrepreneurs, but that merely have a Facebook page that they use to sell their products. They don't have a proper website, they don't necessarily have uh, the capacity uh, to scale up their business because they are not able to face the growth of the demand. For example, you are selling baskets online, but if you have like a hundred of orders, all of a sudden everything is bugging, you cannot deliver, you cannot uh, maintain the quality, etc. So substandard e-commerce practice. Also, uh, lower credibility than their male counterpart, and that was uh, one of the key uh, feedback we got for the women, like compared to, and Rebecca shared it, like someone who was doing seven times less revenue than her had more opportunities for funding. So that's, it, that's a problem as well. As well as, as, well of, uh, as, well as lack of visibility, uh, which therefore gives them less access to policy dialogue, limited opportunities for networking and support at the international, regional, and um, national, regional, and international levels. So I recently joined UNCTAD, as I told you, to put my ex expertise in the field of e-commerce and also leading or contributing to uh, women empowerment initiative um, in order to contribute to shaping, uh, nurturing, as well as developing this network. So what can you expect, what can we expect uh, from this network? What we want to do, our ambition is to identify the most influential women in e-commerce. And by that we mean women who have succeeded in their business by creating jobs, creating wealth, um, growing, and women who want to do more. Um, the other thing we want to do is to get them, as it has, it has been, it has been said repeatedly in, during this week, give them a seat at the table of the most relevant policy-setting processes. 
at the national, regional, and international levels, and allow them to make a difference in this a difference in these processes. Last but not least, we want to empower these women leaders to be able to support the next generation of female entrepreneurs in order to have some kind of uh, virtuous circle and maintain the sustainability on such positive impact. So you may wonder, okay, that these are great intentions, but how do we do that? So what we want to do next is uh, we have a, a web page. Uh, it's um, our digital headquarters. Uh, so it looks a little bit like this. The URL is at the bottom of the, the slide, as you can see. So you go on, uh, it's hosted on the e -Trade for All platform. Um, and you can follow the link slash e -Trade for Women Network. You can follow the, that link. It will allow you, um, if you know someone that may benefit from this, to share that with them. If you're interested in not know, knowing more, you can simply enter your information to to remain uh, updated. So we, our intention is to share monthly newsletter from E-Trade for All uh, activities, including a column with a specific updates regarding uh, E-Trade for Women network. Another step, uh, so another step uh, toward shaping this network will be to make sure that it's relevant to um, the needs of the targeted women as uh, Rebecca say, you can be well meant uh, in a room full of people who have no idea what they are talking about and designing the future of women in e-commerce, in developing economies, etc., etc. Or you can do what we plan to do, which is basically sitting with these women. We have scheduled brainstorming sessions with the beneficiaries of this initiative, as well as with our E-Trade partners and other stakeholders of this initiative to make sure that um, we start um, effective operationalization of this network. Ultimately, well, ultimately, um, there is a saying in Africa that, uh, that goes like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's Basically, what I'm asking you today is don't be a stranger. Spread the word if you can. Help us achieve this, with this ambitious goal, which is make more women successful in the field of e-commerce in, uh, in developing economies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Candice. Um, I want to give a high five to the 23 people who have been sitting on Facebook following this. Thank you very much, guys. Um, there are people who are retweeting. Bola Lawal, who normally is in Dallas. Uh, Chris Brochek, Lynette Kwamboka, uh, Kwasise de Menu. Um, I see for the at Unctad. Unctad is tweeting like hell. We need to give Unctad a shout out. Hey. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Go easy. You are paid for it. Ah. There is Dankuma Zulfau, um, and there is a lady called Isabelle Durand, who is also tweeting. <laughs> Thank you, my lady. That's personal, not sharing this with Uncle. This is your congratulations for being active on Twitter. <laughs> and quite a number of you. Toki World Trade Organization, thank you very much for tweeting. Please keep the tweets coming. Um, panelists, after the E-Trade for All partners, we are going to come back to you to, to get more of your brain and get more of your feedback on everything that we have heard. I see that all of you are on Twitter. You see how it's been going. Um, you've had some questions. We want to come back to those. And then um, we, will re we will interact with people live here. So we won't stretch the session up until 6 p.m. because we want to get, uh, we, do we don't want you to be rushing to get cards and interview people. And we have business there to do. So we want to keep some 10, 15 minutes to do networking. Huh? Uh, we have this room till 6, so we want to make <laughs> maximum use of it. So I'm going to come to the E-Trade partners. I think we'll go in this order. Um, your Esteli Gwe will begin with you, and then we go to this table. If you could take two minutes to, to address us quickly, uh, that would be very helpful to us.
Thank you very much. It's on, okay. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I think you're my sister. Uh, my name is Estelle, <laughs> Estelle Igwe from Nigeria. I work with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, but here I am representing UNCFACT, UNECE, as um, a vice chair of UNCFACT. I want to thank all of you, the panelists. Um, the session has really been quite interesting. Um, we are talking about, um, I want to just share on the policy aspect. It is very important. Um, in UNC fact, we, we recognize that. And so we worked on a white paper, Women in Trade Facilitation. For those who do not know, UNC fact is um, for trade. Our area of concentration is facilitating trade all through the value chain. So we work on recommendations, standards, and guidelines all from the beginning to the end. And uh, we, we realized this, and so we worked on the Women in Trade Facilitation Project, a white paper, so that governments can pick that up. As you know, uh, yeah, our deliverables are for global consumption, and it goes to, to countries. Now, from the part of the world that I come from, it is still a man's world. My sister will agree with me, Nena. It is still a man's world. And so it's difficult for the men to actually let go their grip on power. When I mean power, power in every facet of life. And so there's need for the men to realize all that we are saying. And so that document that we worked on is a document that when government pick it up, they will see all the challenges that we have enumerated here, we've captured them, and especially the policy aspect, because it's really important that women are in policy-making positions. If not, the difference that we are yearning for may just not happen so quickly. You see, you have the SDGs, we say SDG 5, empower women and girls. F SDG 1, you want to end poverty, there's a saying that if you empower the woman, you've empowered not only the family, like uh, Dorothy said, but the whole nation. That's the truth. And the men need to uh, realize that and understand this truth. And so until they get that, they will not just give the women the opportunity on a platter of gold. So I'm also happy that there's networking, that we are talking, this panel of all women, we have to take the bull by the horn ourselves and take it to the men. And so, also, most countries now are democratic. Women, we need to come out, hold political positions. We need to do that so that we are there. Not only as ministers, who knows, much more than that, so that we can take into cognizance the interests of women and work for it. Thank you, Thank you very much. So first, thank you very much for the organizer to having uh, cuts today on this, on this panel. And I prepared my speech for seven minutes, so I will shortcut it. So, <laughs> so just for you to know, uh, CUTS has been working for many years in trying to link uh, the local uh, communities, including the MSMEs and the e-businesses, to their national policy makers, as well as their trade negotiators in Geneva. And overall, CUTS is a family of uh, NGOs all over the world. So we have offices in Asia, in Africa, and here in Geneva. So we have been promoting cross-regional intervention and exchange of policy practices. Uh, making use of our sister organization and different partners in developing countries in order to enhance the participation of women and uh, vulnerable communities in international trade, including in e-commerce. So we have different research studies and advocacy papers that are easily available on our website where we share success stories to showcase uh, 
uh, e-commerce development can positively affect women in developing countries. We re recently commissioned a study on uh, gender challenges in e-commerce, uh, looking at what is being done to support women-owned MSMEs. And I think that this study is a good opportunity for, for cuts and other organizations and individuals to learn about some of the programs and projects that are ongoing, including those led by other E-Trade for All partners. And all based on your own skill and abilities, you may want to complement them, avoiding um, any replication. Um, at Cuts Geneva, we put in place different platforms in different uh, projects. So in those networks, we always try to make sure that women are equally represented, not only in terms of participation in meetings, but also in, in ownership and public speaking opportunities, uh, commissioning studies, etc. And um, yeah, I think you don't really need always to start from scratch and await from uh, potential funding for projects specifically looking at women to start addressing the gender issue in trade and in e-commerce. You can start, yeah, right now. And uh, I want also to share uh, an initiative by uh, a sister organization in India, Cuts India, who recently launched a website that is aimed to act as a repository to, to document Cuts work around the world on differentiated policy implementation to mainstream gender in international trade. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll try and keep mine brief as uh, I have more questions. Oh. There it is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep mine brief as I have many more questions that I would like answered by the panel, frankly. <laughs> So just as an introduction, I, am, uh, I work with the e-residency program of the Republic of Estonia. We help enable cross-border commerce by providing digital identities for people of any country, uh, no matter where they are, and give them the ability to create an Estonian company from anywhere in the world and administer it from, from their location. Um, my question is, for, for a small team with limited resources, what do you think are the most high value things that we can do to enable women entrepreneurs or to enable people or to enable women to be more successful in their endeavors? And then on the flip side of that, what are the most common pitfalls that you or traps that organizations fall in? I know you've mentioned some really good advice already about not parading women around and bringing them to conferences, not wasting their time. What are the other things do you see that we or that organizations make mistakes doing that we should be doing better? So those are those are my main two questions, and of course, what should we be doing as partners to to be helping you? Carla, uh, who is part of our Equals yeah. Web uh, Foundation, is proud to be a member of Equals. We're listening to you, Carla. Yeah, yeah uh, thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. So thank you for the invitation. It's a great uh, pleasure to to be here and to have so many partners in the room, in the panel. Uh, we, we have uh, Half Chicks uh, and uh, ITC, of course, Web Foundation, UNCTAD, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and many of them. So what, um, so I, what, I, I work for the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, and uh, what we have realized uh, three years ago when we put together EQUAS was that uh, uh, when it comes to um, having to, to to having women online and access uh, ICTs, uh, data is still alarming. So we just started to think what we were doing that maybe was wrong, what we were doing that maybe was not uh, the, the correct the correct way of doing things. Uh, considering that, of course, we need to connect uh, the other half of, of the world. Um, and then uh, we, we realized that maybe we needed to put because this is something that we cannot achieve alone, and we need to create a platform and a framework to bring everyone together and to, and to make progress when it comes to, uh, to achieve gender equality online. And that is where we started to call upon partners. Uh, we started to see who was doing what uh, with the main aim to basically scale up what was already happening. It's not as, as, as we had. Uh, it's very easy to grow, it's very difficult to scale. And, uh, and uh, keeping in mind that we have a specific target that we need to achieve by SDG, I mean, uh, sorry, by 2030, which is SDG 5, we really wanted to bring everyone under the same umbrella. So we launched uh, EQUAS, um, 
which is the global partnership to achieve, to achieve gender equality online. Equals is uh, uh, it focusing on three main areas of action, one looking at access that GSMA is leading, the, the other one looking at skills, uh, led by UNESCO and the government of Germany, and the third one uh, is uh, uh, leadership uh, that is led by uh, the International Trade Center and UN Women. And when it comes to leadership, uh, we see leadership in a double uh, way. So we have uh, uh, how to get more women in senior management positions, especially when it comes to the tech field, because as, as, uh, as uh, we heard, uh, many, many women are not even applying for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for um, uh, senior management position. And then how to have, the second aspect is how to have more women as, uh, as entrepreneurs. If we see that today only the 6% of app, de app developers are women, it's kind of scary. So, and if we really want to, to, to grow on this, we really need to bring everyone on board. We need to connect women uh, to investors. However, investors need to understand what are the real needs of, of women entrepreneurs. And most of the times, this is not the case because investors are coming with their own criteria and saying, I invest only if uh, this is the type of uh, uh, business that, that, you, that, that, that you can provide. So we really need uh, to, again, to, to, present, uh, uh, to present evidence, and that goes at every level, at the policy-making level, at the business level, at the investors level, and we really need to show that uh, through targeted and measurable actions, then we can, uh, we can, we can make it happen. And, um, and the, the last thing, and then I would be happy again to, to, to hear more from, from the panel and from, from the participants, is that uh, we really, uh, we also need to, um, to showcase, we really, we really need the role models. We need to encourage and to push, you know, young women to start to develop uh, uh, their own business or even to start just to, to start from, from, from the basic because there is always the potential to grow. So role modeling, especially when it comes to the developing world, and we heard a lot, is, is, is very important. And uh, next, uh, next week, uh, uh, EQUAS is actually opening the nomination phase of the EQUAS in Tech Awards, which is uh, the only international prize that is given by, by the EQUAS partners. Uh, it's not a cash prize, unfortunately, but you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, we, we are trying in any case to expose and to, and to promote uh, uh, initiatives that are coming uh, from, from all over the world when it comes specifically to, to, uh, to tech. So thank you very much, and uh, happy to answer your questions. Thank you to the, uh, to the e trade for all partners. Um, I hope you've had some water, because you have so much to address. You have, um, someone is asking what can multilaterals do? Um, what can we do to make sure women succeed? What are the pitfalls? What are the mistakes? Um, how do we get women in top management positions? How do they, because how do they even take up the courage to fight for it um, and get there? And how do we have more women developers all through? Um, how do we get more women mentors who are available to mentor other people, the women leaders? And um, the role models, uh, there are quite a number of things on the table. Here is what we will do. We will give two minutes each for each um, panelist. Uh, take one and, and speak to it. Don't, you don't need to address all the issues. Take the one that is closest to your heart and give us your thinking around it. And we're going to round up and come down here. And people over here who want to take our space are free to join us. Um, once again, shout out to those who've been sitting on Facebook following this. I really appreciate that you are participating. Um, I've noted the questions you've asked and I've transmitted them to the people themselves. They are going to take care of those questions. So Candace, if you could take two minutes um, to speak on an issue that has been raised. We're not going to um, address everything now, but the, the conversation will continue. That is, um, can you hear me? Yes. One issue that is very close to my heart is the lack of representation, role models, and mentoring in this space. For On one hand, for women to feel empowered or at least curious into 
getting to higher position in this space on one hand, and on the other hand, for the world to give them more credit and credibility. That's the, the one issue I would like to, I would like the world to take more seriously, whether it's in tech space or beyond. A lot has been said. I don't know if I have only one issue um, uh, or that, that I would like to tackle. I think that everything that has been said, uh, we, it's good that, we, that everything was already, already acknowledged, that we are aware of the issues, that we are aware of the problems, that we're not denying the, the facts and that we know that we have to change. And I believe that uh, change happens person by person by starting from every one of us and small steps can lead to big change. If we start from our own homes, from our own lives, from our own children. And one thing that uh, was not mentioned maybe and I would like to tackle uh, is that uh, parenting and home growing plays a crucial role I think on how uh, little girls are raised, because we know that if they're raised differently, still boys and girls. So I believe that for everything that I have achieved and what I am today, that I'm not afraid to take challenges. And I would definitely say that it's the how I was raised, or, or I owe it to my mother and my father. And I really think that that's something that's very important that the governments, that countries should address. And uh, sh we should not only pay attention to creating leaders uh, from like our ages, but I, I think that we should go away uh, a step back and start it from the very, very early ages. And I would agree with what was, what was your name. I'm sorry about that, that women are not supportive of each other like men. I would definitely agree that I have felt it uh, when speaking at various conferences and events and uh, I, it, this is something that at that, uh, the last conference I got, like, you know, the, the event ends and it's me and three other uh, men are talking on the panel. And actually, uh, the three women and one man. And then the panel ends and everybody comes, like, we're exchanging business cards and talking. And the other panelists that were in the panel, like, uh, are, are the, the men usually, you know, congratulate you and say, we can do business and this is the business cards. And I got the questions of, Oh, you have so much energy. Are you, uh, do you have kids? And I'm like, no, not yet. Um, are you married? No. Oh, the energy will go through, you know, it will, <laughs> it, it will pass. That's why you're so energetic. So I, uh, I think that definitely we should support each other and definitely men are maybe more giving the wind at their back. They're not jealous uh, uh, and compared to fe uh, we women. So I, I really would agree with you on that. so far and uh, felt strongly about you know what the panelists and also the audience said um, I think be, being a leader or entrepreneur is a hard thing <laughs> you know no matter it's men or, or women right it is a hard things and especially for for us you know some expectations for us in terms of the family the role in the family you know the culture things the, the society things um, I think um, well uh, getting the courage uh, is very important on the on the journey and enhance the female leadership visibility and as a role model for the next generation or upcoming female leaders or entrepreneurs is is very very important and uh, maximize the opportunities to share the real story <laughs> the real things the up and downs we have been through uh, gives us some authentic advice you know, on the young girls <laughs> uh, who are on the road, uh, I think could be very, very helpful. Like what Rebecca just uh, shared the story, very, very touching. And uh, I also realized why at the beginning of my self introduction, I unco unconsciously mentioned about my age. <laughs> you know, that's kind of way to gain the, the respect in the business or professional world, rather than seeing, you know, my business is the number one in China so far in this area is 100 billion transactions last year online, you know, but you know, but in reality, sometimes we do need some extra things or effort to, to gain the, 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 tr the trust and the, the respect. And uh, last but not least, I think um, um, 
be the best of ourselves. Um, each single of us, I think, is the best ambassador of female leadership, right? So any of one us have made some achievement so far, I think we are the lucky ones. I, I do feel, you know, it, it's the luck. And I think part of the success is to succeed in the business world, but more meaningful success uh, or more fulfilling part of me is to how to help others like us to succeed. I think uh, uh, ultimately this is why we need to be successful. Yes, thank you. Exactly what I was uh, I was uh, planning to say. However, I, I I wanted to tackle two issues. I mean, uh, the education, as you said, when we educate our children on equality values, uh, we are uh, educating the next generation of uh, of uh, of men who have these equality values uh, uh, into them. Um, I, I wanted to share also an anecdote that happened to me like a few days ago. With a, um, uh, w within a meeting of, uh, I was the youngest and the only female, and I was explaining to an official uh, in my country uh, the, the project that we were working on, which is connecting through wireless uh, networks uh, a small community of women to, be, to enable them to sell their goods. And yeah, he, he looked at me, uh, oh, good, good project. Uh, I mean, the other men uh, talked, and then he came back and he was t talking about the problems in the community which are building roads. And he just turned and looked me at the eyes saying, these are the projects that we prioritize. This is why I, I, I wanted to share with you this anecdote because we have double challenges here. We have the challenge of gender, but we have also challenge of making digital economy acceptable by, by our government. I, I, uh, that's it. Um, I want to tackle on two subjects as well. The first one is regarding the role models. I think I agree completely what you said. I was just reading an article this morning um, about women-led governments on the New York Times, and a quote stuck with me. It said, a woman's wisdom comes in part from the juggles of her life. And I think that is very real about exposing uh, women, female role models, uh, instead of trying to put a, paint a picture where just leaning in is enough, uh, I think showing complex juggling women, real women, is way more inspiring than the know-it-all under control person. Um, at least for me, when I was going through college, I was very scared of being successful because I thought that meant giving up having a family or a husband or being forever alone. And now I have a family and I have three kids and I'm juggling with the complexities of life. And I think it's m richer to expose how hard it is to get out of my house at 9 a.m. in the morning, getting everyone ready, than to just say my life is perfect. I think it's more inspiring to show the, the complex act, um, questions. And regarding your question about how do you make sure that uh, companies or make policies in order to have more women in the, in the C-level positions, there is a McKinsey report that was just uh, published in Mexico, and they have five uh, different edges. The first one is commitment from the CEO. Mm -hmm. The second one is leadership development, then making sure the infrastructure is in place so that women can work remotely, the policies, maternity leaves, and, every and everything are in place. The fourth one that is the most important, but called my attention the most, is measurement and dashboard and data analysis, because even if you have infrastructure for women to work from home or to have a short week or whatever, if you don't measure that correctly, then in the evaluations, they will never be able to get a promotion because they're not evaluated in the same way, and then training. So I, I think that was interesting. Okay. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I think to answer the question again um, about what you can do, buy from us. So I think one of the areas that we have such a hard time is procurement. You know, when especially international organizations that fund projects in various countries, they have all this criteria that automatically eliminates women. women. Why? Because we don't have access to the financing. 
So you have these things called bid bonds, right? So you have to put up like $50,000, $100,000. A man has a relationship with, I hear men, it's like, oh, I had an overdraft protect. I got an overdraft. I mean, at the last minute, can you believe it? I th had to threaten the bank manager. I've been in that bank. I had a hard time getting, they wouldn't let me in. Like, they would not physically let me inside the bank. Because in Cameroon, I went to open a bank account at Citibank. They wouldn't let me inside the door. They said, no, 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 this is a business bank. Yeah. Um, and I had three accounts with, you know, with, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in my U.S. Citibank. But they wouldn't let me in the door. Um, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a continuous struggle. Um, you know, I, re I remember going to deposit a check for, for a, a million dollars. And I needed um, the equivalent of about 20000 and I, t I sat on a bench for five hours while they were trying to figure out if they should give me my money. It was a certified check that I was depositing. I mean, those types of things, like, they don't see us as human beings, you know? So, so, so I, I think something has to be done in the procurement process to, and to allow women to get these large contracts. We're not talking about $50 and $100 in micro. We don't want that anymore. You know, we want the real money. Um, and I think we will manage it much better than, than the men do. <laughs> and to be a, a very optimistic, like we're optimists because we're entrepreneurs. Everybody here believes in entrepreneurship and tech entrepreneurship for women. And on that note, I wanted to share something that I shared on an earlier Africa panel. And um, there's an organization called Afrolabs. And Afrolabs is a network of the innovation centers and technology hubs across the African continent. And we had elections, it's been almost two years now. Um, but we had elections and each member of the board had to be elected individually. And with one exception, all the board positions were win, won by women. And so the, and, and this is an organization that supports 250,000 entrepreneurs um, through its network um, it, it, on the continent. So it's, it, it, I think it's very symbolic um, that, that the face of this organization is female. Our executive team, our executive director, and her entire team are, with one exception again, because we're inclusive, um, as all women. And I think that this is, it, this is an example of, of the fact that in our industry, in tech, women are recognized when they, are, they do um, come forward. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that it, it is, you know, as far as women taking on responsibility. What I found is that in, I, in my company, in, in my Cameroon office, we bring in about 15 interns uh, during the summer. And I always ask that the universities send me all women. And they never do. They send me about half and half. So I end up with about half and half. And what I find is that the women early, when, at the beginning of their internship, are very shy. They're very shy, but then the, the fact that there are other women there, and the fact that it's a company run by a woman, and that they start to open up. And at the end, we have a competition. And at the end, it's with the women that win. Um, you know, they've created a solution, they've created an app, they've done something. And it's not that I make them win. It's, it's, and they're voted, like it's the other interns who are voting. So I, I think that, that finding a way to um, let the women express themselves um, in a confident, in a confident way, um, and supporting that is one way that we can all, all really help. Wow, 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 wow! I've been personally wowed. I'm, we're going to come down to you just now. What we want to do is to allow people online to take a breather, but we'll, we'll have some minutes in here to chat more. Uh, it is good to do things for women, but I have, I started on a very optimistic grounds, but I'm going to challenge all of us. When we are saying space for women at the table, where do you want the men at the table to go? Because nobody wants to leave. Mm -hmm. So you are not going to answer that question, but think of it. Who is leaving? Who do you want to kick out? Whose interest are you fighting against? And do you think that person will sit and smile? No. So there is going to be a battle out there. The second one is qualifications, education, and the skills 
needed. Um, I do recall when I was running my company before I joined the Web Foundation, um, I, I, met, I sent a bill, I sent an invoice to a client and the person called me and said, what is a little girl like you doing with X thousand dollars? So I don't know if it was my age he was insulting. I didn't know if it was my expertise he was insulting. I just went home and cried. But I wasn't that young anyhow. But I, I was thrown, I was expecting every other question but the one of what's a little girl like you going to do? Because I was not married, I didn't have kids, so you, don't, you think I don't have a right to make money. But I'm coming to do work for you. And that is the right compensation for the work I'm, whatever my, just pay me for the work I'm going to do, you know. So not just buy from us, but pay us uh, the, the market rate. Um, for those who come from Africa, families run us dry. <laughs> yes, um, I will say this, and you can quote me. Our business money, sometimes we are, we are pressed to use it for family purposes. Because we are the softer ones, they will come to us, they will cry. I have brothers, they don't give a dime until they, they hit what they want. But for us, they will come and tell us, they will explain to us, and we end up solving family problems for which nobody will be thankful because they think that it is our duty to take care of it. Our money belongs to everybody, but money for men belongs to men alone. Why? <laughs> we need to face those problems. Um, I have had a friend who is a programmer. Someone was speaking about programming and, and uh, who, who holds the desk, the IT desk. And customers will call, hello, may I speak to an IT person? And he will say, I am the IT person. He's like, ah, okay, I'm going to call back. Call again. Can I speak to an IT expert? I am the IT expert. Is there no man available? As if this piece of thing is, is uh, we code this. Why do you think that because I'm a woman, I can take care of your computer? I can code your stuff? No. So here, here is what I'm going to say. I'm going to use an imagery that we all know. There's something called the duck. The duck, when you see it on a stream or on water, it rolls majestically. It looks like it's floating. But then if you look underneath, it, is, it has webbed feet and it's paddling like hell. But it's paddling underneath and it's floating on top. That's every entrepreneur woman you see. We work hard hours. We are heads of two, three families. We manage a lot of things and we still manage to keep up our head. So if you were here and you have business, please, if there is a positive discrimination, do it. Because the woman you see that is handling your business is handling tougher things. Please give us your business. We can do it for you. I'm going to stop here. I we want to say thank you to those who are on Twitter. I want to say thank you to those who are on Facebook, those of you who hung out. We are going to step down and come to you now, and we are going to chat until 6 p.m. Thank you so very much. There's a gentleman from UNCTAD who's been taking photos. Your photos are wonderful. I don't know where you are. Thank you very much. Thank you to our interpreters. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to Madame Duran who stayed. Oh, thank you. What is it that you're staying here? Your, your, your heart has come into this thing. We want to thank you for your leadership. Thank you, everyone. We're not going away. We're just going to move around. If you want to come here, come and speak. We have 30 good minutes to chat. But on this note, I will say thank you, Candice. Uh, thank you, Nina. Uh, thank you, Yao. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my good friends. And thank you so very much. This conversation will continue. It will continue beyond UNCTAD E-Week. It will continue until we get to a sustainable development. My name is Nenna. I come from the internet. And my dream is to have more women like this who can lead, who can make money, who can represent, and who can move us forward. Thank you very much.